This lesson deals with the impulse response and convolution. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 11, starting on page 11. Convolution is the process by which the impulse response of a linear system is used to determine the zero state response due to any other input. In other words, y of t is the inverse Laplace transform of h of s times x of s. Now a signal x of t is said to be causal if there exists a value of t0 such that x of t is zero for t less than t0. Otherwise you call it non-causal. Some examples of causal waveforms are our step function, the exponential, and the damped sine wave we looked at previously. Now convolution can be carried out entirely in the time domain. So given a causal response, h of t, and a causal input, x of t, the zero state response can be obtained from what's called the convolution integral. And that's equal to the following. y of t is equal to the integral from zero to t of h of t minus tau times x of tau d tau. Now tau is a dummy variable of integration, and the term h of t star x of t is a shorthand notation for h of t convolved with x of t. I'll do the proof in the next video and starts on page 13. Let's do an example to compare an estimate process to the convolution integral. Suppose you have a linear circuit and that the impulse response h of t is equal to 2 e to the minus t u of t, and now we apply a new input x of t, which is equal to e to the minus 2t u of t. Can you find the zero state response using the estimate process, and then repeat this again using the time domain convolution integral? In the estimate, h of s is the Laplace transform of our h of t, which is 2 e to the minus t times u of t. This can be equal to 2, and then divided by s minus a minus 1, or s plus 1. Our x of s now is equal to the Laplace transform of x of t, which is just the Laplace transform of e to the minus 2t, which is 1 over s plus 2. Then our output, y of t, is the inverse Laplace transform of h of s times x of s, which is equal to 2 divided by s plus 1, and then also divided by s plus 2. We can do a partial fraction expansion with some k1 over s plus 1 plus k2 over s plus 2. Find k1, we'll multiply s plus 1 times this expression, 2 over s plus 1 divided by s plus 2. And then let s equal minus 1. Term cancellation, so we get 2 divided by minus 1 plus 2, and that's equal to 2. To find k2, we'll multiply the same expression by s plus 2. The s plus 2's cancel, we'll let s equal minus 2. And so we get 2 over minus 2 plus 1, and that's equal to minus 2. So y of t is the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s plus 1 minus 2 over s plus 2. Using our table in chapter 9, then, this is 2 times e to the minus t minus 2 times e to the minus 2t. Let's take one final step and replace this in terms of our time constant idea. So we'll write this as 2 times e to the minus t over 1, and then minus 2 times e to the minus t divided by 1 over 1 over 2, which is a half. This is true for t greater than 0. Let's do the same example in the time domain using the convolution integral. We had that y of t was equal to the integral from 0 to t of h of t minus tau times x of tau d tau. h of t was equal to 2 e to the minus t, so we're going to replace just t by t minus tau. And then x of t was e to the minus 2t, just replacing t by tau, and then d tau. I could write this as 2 times e to the minus t, and then times e to the minus a minus tau, or e to the plus tau. Then we can combine these two exponents as plus tau minus 2 tau, or just e to the minus tau. Now 2 is just a constant, bring it out in front, and e to the minus t is not a function of tau, so you can bring that also out in front. We just have the integral of e to the minus tau. And the integral of e to the ax is 1 over a e to the ax, and a is equal to just minus 1 in this case. So we get a minus 1 times e to the minus tau, and evaluate it from 0 to t. So then we have minus e to the minus t, and then we have a minus a minus e to the minus 0. And then multiplying this out, then we have 2 e to the minus t times a minus e to the minus t. So we have a minus sign on front, the 2, and then we have adding up the exponents, we get minus t twice, or e to the minus 2t. Then multiplying this times this is just multiplying it by 1, so it's equal to 2 e to the minus t. Just rearranging terms here, let's put this first. So we have 2 e to the minus t minus 2 e to the minus 2t, which you could write this as 1 over 1 over a half, which is 0.5. This would be true for t greater than 0. You can multiply it by u of t. And this is the same result we had on the previous page. We did this only in the time domain, not in the s domain. And this is a lesson dealing with the impulse response and convolution in the time domain.